Um, I'm not really sure how to start this video because I just kind of wanted to give an update and have a bit of a chat. <laughs> I've been in a flare-up for quite a while now and by flare-up I mean my symptoms are worse, I'm able to do less and generally I have become a lot more debilitated by my conditions again. So essentially flare-ups come and go. That's one of the things about being a chronically ill person or a person with a changing disability. I guess someone who may be paralysed might have the same level of paralysis all the time if they've got like a spinal cord injury and it might be quite consistent. Whereas somebody like me who has Tourette's, FND, or somebody who has a chronic illness like EDS, it might be completely different every single day. Which means that we can't predict our symptoms, we can't predict what we'll be able to do, we're always able to do different amounts of things, sometimes getting dressed is too much, and other days we might, you know, go out shopping or do everyday normal things that other people do. But I think the thing that's really difficult is when we do have a flare-up, when I have a flare-up and it's like this, my daily capacity and my energy goes down, it's really disheartening. I've had FND for... I think around three or four years now. Four years, I think. And I've had Tourette's. My diagnosis I've had for four years. And I've had tics since I was seven. So I have had my conditions for a long time. I didn't become disabled overnight. It's been something that I've had for years that has gotten worse and gotten better. And it waxes and wanes. It's never a solid one journey. But even now, I find it really hard to cope when things do get bad again. And that's kind of why I wanted to make this video because I'm feeling really guilty for not working. I'm feeling guilty that I didn't get the video out this week that I wanted to film. I wanted to film really important videos that would have so much information in and they were quite heavy, but I just did not have the energy to even get ready a lot of days this week. <sighs> Things are just weird at the minute. I wanted to give you a little update on how I am because I never really get to talk about what my life is currently like unless I'm doing a vlog or something like an Instagram story. My main feed YouTube is usually reserved for the good times, the trips, the exciting things, the things I achieve in life. But a lot of the time, life doesn't look like that. The reality is that a lot of days I'm in bed, I'm lying here with my little cat, and I feel exhausted. I feel shattered. I'm having some sort of symptom every single day. It's never smooth sailing, but saying that it isn't all bad either. This week I got to go and watch my friend's dance show that she was doing. She finished uni. I got to go shopping with my mum even though I did have a big flare-up afterwards and I completely crashed for the day and had really awful symptoms. I can technically do things like I'm using my wheelchair, which enables me to get out. It enables me to physically move my location and do things like shopping. But there is also the really hard nights and the really difficult symptoms that have worsened recently, which is why I'm a little bit not up to date and I'm in a little bit of a flare up and I, I'm struggling a bit, essentially. It's strange because the past couple months I have felt the most me I have felt in years. I mean, I'm literally wearing a jumpsuit. This is from Run and Fly, by the way, for anybody wondering. I will link it, but I'm wearing a jumpsuit with space on because I've been obsessed with space since I was about <laughs> six years old. I've loved it. I love the planets. I love the solar system. So I bought myself a jumpsuit that has space on it because I don't care if it's loud or if people think it's weird. I feel like me in it. And I found so many things like fashion wise and like decorating my wheelchair, using my wheelchair, things like enjoying art again and falling back in love with music. I have felt so much like me since like unmasking and getting my autism diagnosis. So on a mental note, I feel like I've been the best I've been in years. Things seem to be improving and I'm really grateful for that. I've started socialising again and I, I have friends. <laughs> I have friends that I really value and who I love and I talk to on a daily basis, which is something I haven't been able to do for a very long time. But on the flip side of that, I, I'm flaring up and I don't know why. I guess there doesn't have to be a reason, but it kind of feels like it doesn't match up. And I will probably look back on this and pinpoint a trigger and think, oh, you idiot, it was this. And there'll be something really obvious that triggered this entire thing. Or maybe there won't be. Maybe it's just that life isn't quite fair sometimes. Some days I feel great, 
Some days I don't. But anyway, I wanted to talk about my FND symptoms a little bit. There's kind of a split between my audience. There's a lot of people here who either have FND or have Tourette's or have researched it and know a lot about it. And then there's the people who are here for the things like writing or they're here for the, the wheelchair advocacy, but they don't actually know what FND is. So for those people, I wanted to say that my main symptom that I've had, well, my main kind of body part that my FND affects has always been my legs since the beginning, like since my FND symptoms started like four or five years ago. It's always been that my legs paralyze, my legs get dystonia, I get tremors, I lose all my energy and get really weak. It tends to start and end with my legs. It does affect my whole body. I've been fully paralyzed before. I have wrists that lock. So like it isn't limited to this. There is so much more to FND, but it tends to be that my legs are something that is always really affected. Hence me being a wheelchair user and having crutches and braces and things like that. Like mobility wise, I really struggle to get around. This wasn't so much of an issue about a year ago. My symptoms kind of morphed a little bit for a while and I didn't really have a leg flare up for like quite a few months. I thought that my FND was lessening, but actually the symptoms were just swapping to other things like fatigue, brain fog, my seizures. Yeah, that has kind of swapped back recently. On top of everything else, like the lack of energy and the weakness and the tremors and all the all the other things that I'm dealing with and brain fog and seizures. My seizures never go away. They're always here. And fainting as well. Yeah, of course, fainting, one of the main symptoms. On top of all of that, my legs are now paralyzing again. So I can technically move. Today, I can move my legs, but they don't feel right. My legs are like, I don't know how to explain it. They almost buzz. Like my toes are blue. I'm not going to put my feet on the internet, <laughs> but my toes have no circulation. My circulation is really bad despite me trying to do exercises. I'm trying to do the things that my physio sets me. I'm trying to move. I'm trying to walk. But the more I do, the more my body fights back and gives me more symptoms. I spent the other night trying to fall asleep but I, I don't think I fell asleep till about 4am because I was just having really really awful seizures. And something that is never really talked about is the kind of trauma that you go through during health events and medical emergencies. Even though an FND seizure for me isn't a medical emergency anymore, we know that they're not going to harm my brain in itself. Like as long as I'm physically safe and I'm not like going to hit my head on something, the seizure isn't inherently dangerous, but it's still really scary. It's still traumatic. I've had seizures for three or four years now and they still scare me. The really physical ones, the really scary ones. I don't know what's going on. My body hurts. Everything is confusing and it hurts and it's uncomfortable and I don't like the feeling. It's not something that's fun. <laughs> I think this is a big misconception that people get when I post awareness about things. They're like, I don't know why you brag about it. I don't know why you like your disability. Why do you like talking about it so much? And I'm like, I don't like this. <laughs> I didn't ask for this. I don't want this. I don't want to spend my Tuesday evenings in bed sobbing because my body hurts and I can't control it. I don't want to be doing that. The reason I post about it, the reason I talk so much about it is because of that, because so many people are struggling with this. So many people feel alone when they're in flare-ups and they feel like they're trapped in the house. Maybe the house isn't accessible like mine and you can't get up the stairs to your bathroom and don't have a downstairs bathroom. My house is not accessible. <laughs> I'm like, so many people think my house is accessible and that I like live in this massive, big, rich, accessible bungalow or something, but I don't. I can't use my wheelchair inside my house very much. I can get it in my room and I can get it in the living room, but I can't go between those because there's a door that doesn't fit my wheelchair through. There's a step down to my kitchen. There's steps upstairs. My bedroom is downstairs because we converted one of the rooms down here into a bedroom for me. But the bathroom's upstairs, so <laughs> I still can't live on one floor. We have a big driveway. We have steps outside. It's it's just, I feel very, very limited because when you're flaring up, you feel the inaccessibility of things around you so much more. There are so many people, not just me, that I know are going through this right now. And nobody talks about it. Nobody talks about the really hard days because we're not really good enough. We're not, we don't have enough energy. We're not well enough to advocate 
on those days so nobody ever sees it. You only see what I can post. You only see what social media creators or content creators or advocates, you only see the things that they can edit. You only see what they film when they're well enough. I've just noticed my cat is cuddling my teddy. That is the cutest thing ever. But yeah, those are just some thoughts I have because I wanted to update you and also say that this is going to be the video for this week. A little touch of reality to say that I'm struggling <laughs> and I'm human. I'm human. I'm not a machine that can do content and make videos and keep up this job that I now have. I'm so grateful to have this as my job, but it is hard work. It's not an easy job to have, even though some people think it's just a breeze. And being disabled, I can't work. I've said this so many times, I'm not well enough to do a job. I can't hold down a full-time job. And what I'm doing here, my advocacy, everything, it is a job. And so sometimes I'm not quite well enough to keep up. I have been posting, I've got a lot of drafts, I've got a lot of TikTok drafts sitting in there waiting to be posted and I've been using those for the past like two, three weeks. I haven't actually filmed or edited anything, <laughs> I've just been using all the stuff that I've already got ready and finished. I need to rem remind myself of this and remind you guys that you don't owe anybody anything. If you aren't well enough to do something, you aren't well enough to do it and you don't owe anybody an apology for your body not functioning. It's not your fault and it's not my fault either, but I still did want to come on and explain, not just for an explanation, but just to say this is what's happening. But yeah, I managed to get ready today. I actually had a shower, which I'm very proud of. <laughs> Showering like seems like such a basic thing in life. Like it's just something that neurotypical healthy people do not even think twice about. They'll just sh shower every day and they wash your hair and it's like an easy task. But for someone with a disability, it can be so draining like I cannot stand in a shower I can't do it for very long but I have a shower seat and I managed to have a shower I'm in an outfit that takes no energy because it's all one thing it looks cool but I only had to put one thing on it's amazing I really highly recommend getting outfits and things that don't take up energy and don't take up willpower or decision making and that are comfy I can sit down I can sit in my wheelchair for hours and this is really comfortable. And so finding things like that that make you feel good but are comfortable and are kind of accessible to being in a flare-up, stuff like that makes me feel good even when my body feels really bad. <laughs> I also managed to do my makeup and my hair is freshly washed so I look presentable which is why I'm recording today because I feel well enough but don't take this as me saying that I'm struggling but I look well. What people look like, what people look like especially on social media does not reflect how they are in reality. So it's really important to remember that. But anyway, I hope the audio is okay. I didn't check it. Um, I don't have the energy to, so fingers crossed it is all working and fingers crossed you enjoy this little insight, this little reality check and chat about kind of, I guess, grieving a non-disabled life. It's tricky. It's really hard mentally and obviously it's hard physically, but I think the mental aspect is sometimes even more difficult. It's really hard to accept that you are disabled and you can't do as much as you used to. You can't keep up with the people around you. You can't even do the things that you want to do. I want to write, I want to make my content, I want to film videos, I want to go out and see friends, I want to go to gymnastics. I want to go to gymnastics so freaking badly. I'm, I love it. I love it. I want to do yoga. I want to go swimming. I can't do any of those things but I will be able to one day, hopefully I'll get back to doing the things that I love. But right now I'm just resting a lot and I'm just doing what I can do and appreciating that and appreciating the little things and just being at peace with that is something that's hard to do, but it's something I'm really, really trying to do as as much as I can. So if you're in any sort of a similar situation or maybe, maybe you're struggling with your mental health or a chronic illness or you're just feeling shit, <laughs> You can feel shit for no reason, it's okay. Whatever it is, just be kind to yourself. It's not your fault and it's okay if it takes a bit longer to get back to usual. You're not alone. I'm gonna wrap this up. This has been a really long chit chat, but it feels good to talk about it even if it's just to a camera. I really, I really recommend talking. Don't isolate yourself. Even if you're physically isolated, there are online communities. Che cheeky plug here, but my Discord server is somewhere that so many people chat. We have like FND chats, Tourette's chats, a forum for all health stuff. So there's so many posts in there about like hypermobility, POTS, different sexualities. I don't know, there's so much in there and there's little gaming chats. So if you don't want anything to do with disability or chronic illness, you don't want to talk about that, that's fine. It's also a safe space just to go and enjoy your hobbies. It's just a really nice space so if you are feeling really lonely and you relate to some of the things I'm saying that might be a place you want to go. You can make some friends. If not, 
that's okay too. I understand it can be really hard to keep up socially, so if you don't feel social, you don't want to check social media, you just want to sit, you know, have some alone time, that's okay too. Everybody copes differently, and I know that I definitely need some alone time. Uh, some? I need a lot of alone time um, in order to keep myself kind of sane. But yeah, I hope you have a lovely day and I will be filming some more videos when I'm feeling a little bit better, hopefully soon, but I will see you next Sunday, 5pm for another video. I hope you enjoy. Bye.